So, yes, correct. So there you go. He fought in June. So I reckon they should schedule a match for the end of the year between Danny Gay, the rematch between Danny Gay and Edson Barboza. That'd be a real good fight. That'd be a good fight. Uh, anyway, so moving on. So, as you know, the Ultimate Fighter returned uh, this year mm. and we finally got to see the finale. Uh, one of the fights for the finale was Ricky... Tur- say Ricky Turkios versus Turkios. Brody Heiston. There you go. Thank you for correcting me on that one. That's you okay. Know, yeah. You know how we are with names. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, but the fight itself, I was really, really impressed with, um, especially Turkios. Now, both of them are actually very, very well-rounded fighters, and both of them were in Team Alexander Volkanovsky's camp, so yeah. I was very, very impressed well, the way how the fight went, it can transition between the feet and the ground very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. There was uh, shows of the tie clinch. There was some wrestling. There was some, you know, groundwork going on. There was a lot of striking stand up. It was just it was from top to bottom, top to bottom. Mm-hmm. Lots and lots of transitions between the thing between the two of them. Right off the bat, both men just fucking went for it. They didn't need to fill each other out. They just went blasting each other. And Ricky looked very, very comfortable from the bottom position, which made I believe made him very, very deadly. When uh. What's his name? When he was on the on the ground, and then Brady, sorry, Brady was just from the top of him. He just said, "No, nah, just pushed him away really, really well, and got back to his feet." And then he actually uh, cut open his head, and f- so he cut open a um, he opened up a cut right above his right eyebrow, which was really, really impressive. And then uh, he was just throwing some punches from the top position, and at one point, uh. Ricky actually got him in a triangle, but he couldn't secure it. Mm. So I thought that was a. I thought it was he, just a really he jumps for it. Yeah, he jumps for it, and then they rolled over on, on into mount and lost it. Yeah, yeah. With uh, with Ricky, he's like it, he's an interesting character because when you're watching the Ultimate Fight, he's honestly he's like the their season of Tony Ferguson. Mm. Obviously, not as quirky as mm. no one's going to be as fucking weird as Tony, but Ricky, he seems to he. From the get go, he seemed like he was on a different level. You know, he went up to Volkanovski and went, "Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go, ready to fight, and all that." And he he seemed to be on a different a different level. Um, yeah, damn good fighter. You had to dig deeper, especially in that last round, because I mean, Heidstein definitely one of his his you know powers is is, is very good wrestling. Um, he had a, a couple of moments in the fight where he was going for some double leg takedowns and managed to. Managed to take him down, but Ricky had to then find his way to his feet. Um, and I thought he actually, because of someone that they both lack a bit of experience, um, but they must have gained so much through the ultimate fight because he was so very composed. When he got ta- taken down by uh, down by Heidstein, he um, he didn't do what most fighters do. Most of them panic and things like that and try to fight hands. He was still putting in work. He was still looking for ways to come up. And if he couldn't come up, elbow to the head, elbow to the head. And then he would work his way up to his feet using the cage and then broke apart. And then he would just keep going. So that last 30, 30 seconds, that was that was Ricky really like pushing part his limits, especially cardio-wise. Fuck. There, he was actually absolutely pushing the gas and that. And that's what's definitely sealed that round three i think if he didn't have the will to in order to get up and push those exchanges i think heisden would have continued to control him in terms of the grappling exchanges on the ground um now ricky did so well and and, i mean hats off to his opponent like damn good as well i mean it's sometimes when you if you make it to the ultimate fighter finale that's not always i mean you want to be the ultimate fighter but it's not always the end for you i mean we remember Uriah Hall and and Kelvin Gastelum they were on the same season but we we managed to see both of them currently in the UFC middleweight division too so it's not the end for his opponent but Ricky Turkio is um definitely someone to watch very very good uh, in terms of stand up quite unorthodox um and his black a uh, black belt in Brazilian jiu jitsu as well funnily enough so well rounded, and um, definitely you can dig deep when it matters most. And that's when you see a fighter come back from a, a bit of adversity and things like that. Um, just tells you something about the, the, the like dependability, how much do they fucking want it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see Ricky fight again, and, and soon to be honest. I know he went through a little bit of a war. Probably wants to see his family after the the end of the Ultimate Fighter. But I want to see him again. I want to fight. I want him to continue this hype, and I want him to fight sometime at the end of 2021 yeah. and continue at outside a crowd 
where it'd be cool if everyone's all watched the ultimate fighter they've seen him rise to um through like you know the semi-finals etc they grow up and they know his story fuck continue that hype yeah and it, towards the end of 2021 november december have another fight against another opponent who's most likely going to be unranked but get your name out there and people will recognize you and i i could see him getting a massive cheer because you know it, it's different being an like a not so well named fighter and then not being as well known but coming off the ultimate fighter they know your story they know a little piece of who you are so i'd like to see ricky um continue that hype in 2021 don't know who will fight but um very keen to see yeah someone who's not ranked don't yeah, give, don't give him a ranked opponent no. uh one thing you're right though i mean with the whole fight and i think the fight in general was probably the most I would dare say one of the most exciting of the whole card. Yeah, 100%. I felt like I was watching a bantamweight version of the Ultimate Fighter season one finale. Mm, mm. And I honestly felt like if that was in front of a full crowd stadium, that whole crowd would have been on their feet cheering because, oh, of been ballistic. Be because the amount of action that was going down mm -hmm. and fights like that should always get more uh, credit than they did when... Um, than they get shown on, yeah, yeah, you know, the credit they deserve. Yeah, for more sure. credit they deserve. Yeah, and that's just honestly my final word. Um, hats off them to both. Both got a solid chin. At the end of that first round, they were just fucking blasting each other. Especially, um, Ricky, uh, he took a massive shot from Brady at the end of the second round, and he just shook it off like it was nothing. Just, yeah, you're right, man. I mean, he uh, well rounded. I'd like to well, see him. He's cool because he's, yeah. Yeah, it was cool to cool to see, like it was a fucking tough exchange. Just it was kind of like, kind of when those fights happen in there, they're just trading in the pocket for those last thirty seconds. Like it is one of those ultimate fighter finales that, like you know, will be remembered. Some of them don't get remembered, and that one will be because yeah. you know that was the right way for the ultimate fighter to come back for sure because it'd been gone for a while. That's the right way to top it off. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing really much more I can say than, yeah, I hope he fights again, but we'll, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see.